Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with our examples about multiple op-amp circuits. This will be our example number three. In this example, I will look at the circuit where we have three op-amps and also a couple of resistors and also two input voltage sources. Of course, we will work out everything step by step in our calculations and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our problem. We have this circuit given. As said before, this is a circuit where we have three op-amps. So you can see these two and also the op-amp three here. And we have two input DC voltage sources, VA and VB. And also a couple of resistors there. So the, all the values of the components and also the input voltage sources, DC voltage sources are shown here. Now what we like to know is the following. The questions are express the load voltage here, VL as a function of the V A and V B. So these two input voltages will produce uh, some specific VL. So we need to know what the relationship is, mathematical expression. In the second uh, question, question B, we would like to calculate the load voltage. So once we know A, we can calculate the B directly. And then we also want to know what the current is delivered here by op -M3. That is also interesting for this question. This is, by the way, called an instrumentation amplifier for amplification of uh, differential input signals. This signal here between these two nodes is considered as a differential input. You will get actually between these two nodes a differential output and it will be then multiplied by this circuit, which is the difference amplifier we have discussed before. Okay, now we get actually a couple of uh, problems or also template circuits together in one complete circuit which is called an instrumentation amplifier but let's look at our solutions how we work it out now due to the feedback again we have the following situation that the at node x and also node y we have the following station this va here will be exactly vx that is due to negative feedback because we have negative feedback for op amp one also and op-amp 2 also has negative feedback, it goes actually like that. And we have then Vy is exactly equal to Vb. So that is the potential situation. Now we have also have the ideal op-amps, because we assume ideal op-amps in this circuit. For ideal op-amp, we have an input impedance which is infinite. That means currents entering the op-amps here are zero also for the third op-amp. All of them are zero, so that means we have a open circuit between these two input terminals of the op-amp. That will be handy later for our analysis. Now let's first start with the uh, expression of VL, the load voltage, as a function of the two input voltage sources VA and VB. Now I will apply Kirchhoff's current law at node X and Y. These two nodes are really important. Now we will do first the current for the RM, this resistor, so I just defined this, this is a choice, you don't have to do that. So go from top to bottom, so IM in this fashion. There's also current for the R1, I1, which is going from right to left. And also the current for R2, which is then I2 going from left to right. This is just a choice because then I have the same direction actually for all of the resistors here. In addition, we have then the equation, the following, we can say that I1 is equal to IM, looking at node X, plus this current actually flowing here, which is then the node, uh, the voltage going in the inverting input of the op-amp one. But we know, we said that before, ideal op-amps has, ideal op-amp have a very large input impedance and infinite in the ideal case, so we can just Remove this and we can say this is just zero. That means I1 is equal to IM. So we can actually consider this as a series combination. Now we can say also for point P and Q here will be designated to move on with the current law of Kirchhoff. We can say now let's express this current I1 in terms of voltages and resistors. That's the same also for IM. Now we can see this VP this node voltage minus this node voltage at node x divided by the r1 will produce the i1 that is the ohm's law this left part right part at the same 
in the same manner, you can say Vx minus Vy, which is the voltage drop crosses Rm, divided by Rm will give you the current Im. So this is the equation here. Now, if I now multiply the left and the right hand side of this equation by R1 times Rm, because I want to get rid of this fraction, I get this expression. Now, I can now multiply out these parentheses. Then you will get this. So you could do R, Rm times Vp, Rm times Vx, and also in a similar form for the right hand side. You will have this expression. Now, I will collect now the terms that are uh, that has the same variable. Vx, for example, can be transformed this to the right hand side. And I have now this expression. Now, what you see is the Vp times Rm is some expression. We can now express Vp like this by dividing the left and the right hand side of this equation by Rm. Now, this is a handy equation we will use later. And you can also say since the dx is Va and Vy is Vb, let's also use that here in this expression because we would like to have for question A the load voltage is a function of V A and V B. So there's no reason to keep the V X and V Y there because we know that these are also V A and V B. So this will be our exam uh, the equation number one. Now we need to move on and do exact same procedure for the node Y. So using Kirchhoff's current law, KCL at node Y, we can say the following. Again, this current is flowing here. So let me first discuss this. There's again the current flowing in the inverting input of the second op amp. You can see that I2 minus, but that is also zero because the ideal op amp has infinite input impedance. So if I set it up, I can say I am will split in I2 and this branch, but this is gone because that is zero, assuming ideal op amp. Again, using now Ohm's law for each current, because the current is equal to voltage divided by the resistors, we can say Vx minus Vy over Rm is equal to Vy minus Vq, this node, so this node minus this node is the voltage drop across R2 divided by R2 will get you to I2. Now we have this expression. Now in a similar form, as we did here, in this form, going from this step to this step, we want to get rid of these fractions. So we can say, let's then multiply the left and the right hand side of this equation by Rm times R2. Again, as we did here for the first case, we can now multiply the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation by Rm times R2. You will get R2 times Vx minus Vi, and then Rm times Vy minus Vq. Now again, multiplying out these uh, parentheses, so R2 times Vx, minus R2 times Vy, and also the similar form for the right hand side. Now, we can also express Vq, because that's the voltage at this node, in terms of the rest of the parameters. And you will get Rm times Vq is equal to this. And if you divide by Rm, you will have this expression. Again, you see the Vy and the Vx in our expression. So we can say, let's then also replace this by Vb and Va. So Vq is also now known as a function of VB and also VA. And that's now our equation number two. By the way, you can also work out this equation number one and two in a different form using superposition principle by looking only at VA and then considering VB as short. So you disable the uh, DC voltage source and see what kind of voltage you get at this node. You can see it that you can do the exact same for the VB and then add the results. But this is a different way to work it out. So we have now the two equations, one and two. Now let's bring them all together here and also the summary for the negative feedback action. So we will use it now. Now we will use the superposition principle directly and for that, for the load voltage, we know it is an effect or the summation of the voltage at this node and also the voltage at that node. So we can say safely this node voltage will produce some load voltage and the voltage at node q will also produce some voltage at the output and that will be then summed together as the superposition principle for linear systems or linear circuits and we can add them up and we have our total vl which we require okay now 
what do we see about VLVP? That is the load voltage due to VP only, this voltage at node P. And plus the load voltage due to VQ only, the node voltage at Q. Now we can say, looking at this node Q and disabling this, I mean the P and disabling the Q, if I disable the Q, that means this is the short, so that it goes to ground, or zero potential, so that means zero potential here, zero potential there. Now these two are actually in effect parallel, but I know the current in the op amp is zero, so the voltage drop across these parallel resistors are zero. And looking from P, this circuit here, this part, is a template inverting amplifier. That's why we have a minus R4 times R3 times the voltage at V, uh, times the voltage at P, so that means then this expression. Now for this node Q, I can do the similar form, but the equation is a little bit, uh, let's say, longer, but it is not that difficult. What you have is, this node is now shorted, so it's a ground. So you can disable this, you can consider this as a voltage source, so you can also uh, connect here the battery, which is VP, and then disable it, it will be a ground. Now we have this uh, node voltage Q, we will first see a voltage division, because if you, can see, you can see it is R6 divided by R5 times R plus R6, that's actually this part. And then, from this node on, it is a non-inverting amplifier. That's the template circuit we have also discussed in the previous videos in this playlist. And you can now see that will be the feedback resistor divided by this resistor going to ground, which is then R4 plus R4, I mean, divided by R3 plus 1, which is then this one. So this is the gain expression for the non-inverting amplifier. And this first part is due to that attenuation by this voltage division, due to this R5 and R4, R, I mean R5 and R6 resistors. Times of course of VQ because that's the input voltage here in this case. So taking these two together in this expression for VL, you have now this uh, expression for VL completely. But we have now the following situation, and this will be then our, our equation number three. We wanted the expression for VL as a function of VA and VB, not VP and VQ. But we are really close now because we know what VP is as a function of VA and VB. We also know what the VQ is as a function of VA and VB. So the easiest way to determine the VL is substitute equation number one and equation number two in equation number three. Of course, we will get a very long expression, but that is the, let's say, the result that we get. Now you get the following. You can follow this very closely. Minus R4 over R3, this part, times the VP, but the VP is equation number one is shown here so this complete thing will be then placed here that's actually shown here in the square brackets in a similar form you go to the uh, vq which is actually this part so going actually this coefficient or this part it's all here and then times the vq which is this one again the square brackets to make this clear what's happening you can see rm plus r2 over rm times vb etc so everything is actually now substituted. You can now see the VL is now an expression which has only resistors, VA and VB. That's exactly what you need to have if you have a question like this. Of course, we can massage this a little bit and then simplify the uh, expression and collect the terms such that you have only VA with some coefficients and also VB with some coefficient. That's what we do now and also skip a lot of steps, of course, otherwise the discussion will be a lot of uh, much longer. But I think this discussion and uh, these uh, steps are th uh, straightforward. So you can just collect all the terms that has VB. And then you have this coefficient actually for VB. And a minus the coefficient for the VA times the VA, of course, itself. Now, if I now substitute the given values here for this circuit and keep only VB and VA as the variables, the unknowns, I have this expression. So it will be then... This complete thing in the first uh, square bracket is 77 over 3. And then the second bracket coefficient is minus 26 exactly. So this is now the expression we required for question A. All right.
Now, moving on, and let me also collect the equation number one and two here, and also the expression what we gain for the question A. For calculation of question B is really straightforward because we have done a lot of work for that in question A. The only need to do is just substitute VB and VA here. So let's do that. Bring up the equation 0 0.006, that's the 6 millivolts, and 0 0.002. That's for 2 millivolts for the VA. And if you do the math here correctly, you will get 102 millivolts. So that is the load voltage here for this situation. Okay. Let's go for the question C, current delivered by op-amp 3, which is then this current. Now for that, we need to first define also the current directions, which are from this node because the current IOP3 will enter this node and you will see the IL and also I4 here will leave it because I just defined of course this I4 myself you can also go in the other direction doesn't matter you will get the exact same result again we can do the Kirchhoff's current law here KCL at the output node so I just named it out the output node you can also say I just named this something you can call it uh, let's say L or uh, K whatever it doesn't matter for uh, for the, any letter now we have this output node now you can see the IOP3 will be IL plus I4 as said before that is the summation but IL is VL over RL and I4 is V4 over R4 but the problem is the following I know this voltage 102 millivolts but I don't know this voltage here at this node. So it is difficult to say what this node is. So I need to make another analysis and calculate that. But I can calculate the node voltage at node P. Because I get the, I have the equation here. So just substitute the values. You will get the voltage at this node P. Why is this handy? Because this resistor R3 and R4 can be considered as a series combination. Because the current flowing in the inverting and open node here in terminal is zero because the op-amp has infinite input impedance. So instead of saying R V4 over R4, we can say VL minus VP over these two resistors together. And that is a better or actually a faster uh, uh, analysis to get the final result. So this is exact same. The current flowing in R4 is exact same as R3. So you will have exact same current. Now we have this expression. We know VL, we know the VP, not yet, but we can calculate it, the expression here. So let's do that. VP is shown here again. Now let's now substitute the values. 10 ohms, 70, and I'll also 10. Now 2 millivolts, 6 millivolts here for the VB, and also the 70 and the 10 for the resistor values. Now you will get here minus 26 millivolts, exactly. If I now substitute this, here and also the 102 millivolts and also here and also the 50 and etc now you will have this you see that the result is now much faster and the final result approximately is here 4.173 milliamps so we have now also found the current delivered by this op-amp 3. Now let's now collect the results we have a b and c these are result. This is the expression for the load voltage as a function of the two inputs. This is the load voltage itself, itself using this result and also the current delivered by op-amp 3. We will also look at, of course, to the, at the simulation results because that will verify our calculations. Now, I have prepared already the circuit in the spice. You can see the VA and VB two voltage sources. Op-amp 1, op-amp 2, and op-amp 3, and also the resistors here. What you recognize, the VP, as we discussed uh, earlier, is minus 26 millivolts, exactly also in this node here, calculated. What you also see is the 102 millivolts at the load, exactly as we have calculated. And also this current here will give you 4.173 milliamp, also as we have calculated. So everything is correct. So that is very good to see. I also want to like to discuss uh, what happens if I change this RM, which is also the gain setting resistor called in the instrumentation amplifier circuit. So if I now go and move on with that one in discussion, 
I can say, okay, let's also look at the current of this op amp 3 and also the load voltage if I sweep the gain resistance RM. I go from zero all the way to 100 ohms, so that is the range. And I can see specifically for 10 ohms, because that was a, the RM for our case, the 102 millivolts and also the 4.173 milliamps. That's the condition here. But what happens if I increase the RM? Now going to 50, the current will go down. Going to, let's say 80, it's also going down. So if I increase it further, 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 this will go to almost zero. You can also see the resistor increasing the gain resistor also reduces the load voltage. That means if I make this very large, let's say one giga, one tera ohms, it almost makes this load voltage zero. It's of course a little bit uh, logical because if I make this open, that is sort of the infinite case, then there is no connection between the input and the output because there's a unit gain feedback, unit gain feedback. So we get something here. And at some point you get some leveling and you will get very low output voltage. So that is really logical to see here also. I also like to know uh, now see this and discuss this circuit in the SPI simulator itself. So how you can generate also the result we have so, uh, seen in the previous slide. So let's now jump to the SPI simulator and also discuss the circuit there. All right, we are now here in the SPI simulator. You can see the VA, VB and also the resistors and also the op amps, op amp 2, op amp 3, all of them are ideal. So no other effects are considered here. You can see the node voltage here. This is the node voltage pin. You can get it from the meters and also here node voltage pin. And then connect it to any node you want to measure that node voltage with respect to ground. And then you can also double click on it and then change the name you want. And this is a current arrow. You will get it also from um, meters. So here a current arrow, click on it and place it in any branch you want. And you can ca uh, then determine the current here in this branch, for example. Now, let's now run this because I already placed the node voltages and also the currents I want to measure. So we go to analysis. And we, since we do DC analysis, we go to DC analysis and then do calculate node voltages. Now let's do that. If you do that, you will get exactly the results we have discussed. And also the results will pop up for the measurement nodes you have placed in your circuit. You can see that also here. So 102 millivolts, 4.173 milliamps as also discussed and also calculated. You get more info if you do, for example, DC analysis and then table of these results. So you get a lot of information. So you can also see that here. So it's a long list. I want to just show you something here because we know this node voltage at node 1 here is the, let me find it, is VP1 is 2 millivolts. That is what we have, of course, have uh, uh, given. But we can also say, is this node 5 also 2 millivolts because that was due to negative feedback. Let's check that. It's shown here. So if I click on this, it will be highlighted in red. So it is indeed 2 millivolts. That's correct. You can also see what's happening to node 2, that is 6 millivolts, so this node. But it is also, for node 6, it's also 6 millivolts, because that's again due to negative feedback. And all the other results are also shown here. You can also click on any component using this pen. It will be highlighted actually here for, in the table, the specific value for the current and also for the uh, voltage for that specific component. You can see again, 1 2 millivolts as discussed. All right, guys, this is for our third example using a multiple, uh, let's say, op-amp circuits. A little bit complicated in the previous two examples to also build up the level and also discuss more challenging examples with, within this topic. If you have any questions, comments about this exercise, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another interesting video. Take care.